What is going on, Chiefs Kingdom? Welcome back to another episode of The Kingdom Says. I am your host, as always, Garrett Williams, and I am joined by my two usual co-hosts tonight. We've got Kyle Henning on the top right of the screen. Kyle, how we doing tonight, sir? Doing all right, doing all right. Uh, more Chiefs football to discuss, and we get to do a, a recap episode this week, and then we get to do a preview episode this week which means wow. that means sunday went all right too i guess yeah sure did also join us at the bottom of the screen arrowhead tom how are we doing tonight tom i Hello, sir. am doing well uh my green screen is fixed and uh what? you know i said before i didn't anticipate i mean i'm back in the chief's locker room <laughs> i can confirm that there is hot water um, <laughs> yeah that's that hot water. Water. nobody that's turned awesome. it off Yep. And then uh, I just, yeah, you know, like I said, after the going into the Miami and all that stuff, like I didn't even expect to be here. So I'm just happy to be here. And yeah, um, what a fun game. What a fun, uh, obviously, you know, it's fun for the winners. Um, another fun. classic hats off to the Bills for, you know, uh, providing us with entertaining opponents. But, uh, uh-huh. you know, we get yeah. the dub and that's what matters at the end of the day. Sure, do you make it a show every time? They really, they're really good at making it a show versus us and making an instant classic that we end up winning in the end. Um, yeah, it was safe to say it was a very good uh, Sunday for Chiefs Kingdom, um, taking down the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo in their home stadium. Patrick Mahomes' mm-hmm. first road playoff game. Um, <laughs> all the, all the narratives, the yeah, just cross them off, check them, check them off the list, and. Uh, Man, what it was really one of the more enjoyable Chiefs games, I think, to watch. I mean, it was definitely up and down, but once you get towards the end and, and winning that thing, it felt very sweet. Um, if nothing mm-hmm. more than just to crush crush the dreams of, of Buffalo Bills fans once again. Um, but it's just crazy. Like, it's crazy. I, I There's a part of me that really wants to feel bad for them because, like, in a lot of ways, Buffalo, they're kind of like the Chiefs, you know, they're kind of like mm-hmm. Chiefs Kingdom was for a little while. You know, it's been a long, long time since they've had success, mm-hmm. and uh, and they're they're real starved for, for having some winning times there, and they just absolutely cannot get past Patrick Mahomes. It's so I almost feel bad for him, but then I, but, but honestly, I, I can't. I can't feel bad for him. I really you want, just, like, yeah, I, I want to, but in reality world, I, I think I really dislike Bills Mafia. I think I do. I think I have to make that known. I, Bengals fans are, are okay. They're they're hit or miss, but Bills fans, I don't know. I'm Let's not well, hold on now because I'm, I'm that's that's I can't I can't, I can't back that take. I'll take Bills I, Mafia over I'll, whatever. I'll put it like this. The, I don't have a good. I don't. I don't enjoy Bills Mafia on X, Twitter, whatever you would like to call it. The large chunk of Bills Mafia, from what I've come to understand, is fairly decent. The uh, idiots throwing snowballs, not a big fan of. That's that gets dangerous. People can get hurt, especially when you're doing it mid play. Nope. And I ain't gonna lie. Strangely, out. strangely, I'm actually kind of kind of okay with the snowballs. I, even uh, though I dislike not, those not, not, not during the play, not when you're hitting guys in the face, not when it's already. And not that's, that's not dangerous. when they're they're more ice than snow. I think that was yeah. the point. Yeah, that yeah. Was kind of that. <laughs> it's a um, good gimmick. It's a good gimmick having. I mean, they're they're heels. They're they sure are heels in Buffalo. They're on. Yeah. They're on the I mean, I, uh, yeah, Cincinnati <laughs> is far worse. But that's yeah. I don't know. I, I'm just surprised that like I don't know Cincinnati, Buffalo. I can I can understand because I I understand their passion. Where yeah, and, and, and they like, suffered for so long, Cincinnati just feels not that they haven't suffered. I mean, shit, they live in Cincinnati, but um, you know, they Cincinnati feels just very entitled most of the time. Buffalo and I feel like Buffalo has, has just works a little bit more. I can, I respect, I mean, Buffalo's Buffalo. been a bunch, Buffalo's been to the big game a bunch. Been two yeah. big games a bunch. One yeah. to get two big games a bunch. Cincinnati's fairly new. I don't know. I don't know. I just the the tables, you know, jumping through the tables. That's really starting to. That's a whole. That's been their stick for years, though. That's, that's what I'm saying. I think that's. I don't know. I don't know. I just. I mean, I, but it's harmless and entertaining versus like I don't know stealing p- things and stabbing people like the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and the I also Bengals can't just make the, a good point there. The also, the the, the players the on the Bengals is a lot of the yeah. issue. Yeah. It's a lot more of the yeah. players. 
Yeah. yeah. The, the Bills players, for the most part, Josh, I have the players aren't too bad. Quite a bit yeah. of respect for Diggs. I must really say, I'll, I, I definitely dislike Fetty fall on his head. I definitely dislike both both of those uh, both of those fan bases, but I will just say that I was very happy to see uh, some of the Bills uh, the Bills tears. Oh, it's uh, it's nice to be the villain. Yeah, it it sure is. We are we are firmly in the villain era of of <laughs> this Chiefs this Chiefs team here, um, which is great. It's it's fun. It's real fun to be in. Like we've talked about it. Uh, we've talked definitely talked about this kind of before on the pod, guys. But uh, just. The, the Patriots were this for years, right? They were for 20 years, basically, the Patriots were this exact team. They broke everybody's heart. Every team has lost to Patrick Mahomes probably in a crushing way at this point. Um, and everybody, you know, we're the we're the big bad uh, wolf that everybody can't take down. And we're just the villain now. It's exactly what the Patriots were. Um, and as much as we hated it uh, from our side when the Patriots were, were doing their thing, all of a sudden, now we are in that role, and uh, it's pretty fun. I think it's pretty fun. It's a, it is it's a, a good lot time. of fun. Yeah, it's definitely well, it's what, fun to uh, to unite just you know with your own fan base and your own kingdom and kind of uh, block everybody out. It's one of those you know KC versus everybody. Yeah, exactly. It's that I'm classic thing. It's, it's fun. It, it is pretty fun. I will say. Um, There's been a lot of. A lot of uh, different memes and gifs along those lines of the villains, but I think, I think one of my favorite along those lines is uh, you you either die a hero or live long enough to become a villain. <laughs> yep, mm-hmm. that is true. In sports, traditionally, when you are a hero very early, you mm-hmm. will always see yourself become a villain in somebody's eyes. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, him Especially Patrick leaning into it and talking about it in the in the past and being open with it, and then he basically told you as much in the locker rooms, pregame, postgame, mm-hmm. Instagram posts. Hey man, uh, <laughs> he they had fun, they enjoyed it, they had plenty of spice for whoever was in Buffalo because that whole sideline turned around at the end of the game and had plenty. Oh, yeah. of it. Plenty that, that gives everybody words, opinions. I mean, that was starting from warmups. You know, yeah, I mean, we saw videos hot. from warmups of Chris Jones just getting into it with the with the Bills Mafia there, and hey man, it continued through the whole game, game in a hostile yeah. environment. Yeah, the boys had I mean, fun. Like I mean, hey, time. that's exactly what you do. What you have a road playoff game for? You know, that's that's mm-hmm. the whole thing. You have home field advantage for that reason. Um, yeah, and so hey, I mean, you got to dish it. You got to take it. And uh, and Bills fans, I think. They definitely dished it quite a lot, and uh, so the Chiefs were. I mean, yeah, the Chiefs were very much uh, willing to dish it back. I mean, Drew. The, oh. Not my favorite video is Drew Tranquil almost catching that snowball and sending it right back at Buddy. <laughs> oh no, he caught it. He definitely he caught, caught it. it. That's, yeah, it just disintegrated in his hand. But it was that was good. <laughs> that was oh, that was real was entertainment to watch right there. Back. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. That's why I kind of like the snowballs, just because I mean, hey. I think, I, think mine, you know. I think mine's probably the Rasheed turnaround where he, he the the kick misses and he immediately just turns around and points at somebody and get starts mm-hmm. get, and I was like, man, you know they had to have been giving it to them all day. Yeah. Warm up and I snowballs at the bus, stuff in the parking lot, in the warm ups, all mm-hmm. throughout the game. You know oh, yeah. they were all the all game. For for the whole sideline to react the way it did, because it wasn't one or two guys, it was the whole team. Everybody, yeah. <laughs> Patrick ran over mm-hmm. through through fire to give his stuff give his stuff to a couple of the Chiefs fans yeah. up in the front row. Mm-hmm. He like, was quick. He was <laughs> he was ducking down and getting right yeah, back out there. Great. I like see that. I just that is that's the epitome of going in somebody's house and, and beating them, you know, and, that's just and what you like get. you said, tearing their soul out. That was, that, yeah. cr- that hurt Buffalo. Mm-hmm. You could tell hurt. that if, as much as the, whatever the city wants to say to play, <laughs> fans want to say, look at them players faces. Some of those players faces, man. And the, the interviews, players, the and fans, the I mean, the fans are probably more hurt. They started showing those shots of all the Bills fans. Oh, just that crying. one like, poor man. guy. Oh, oh that one like, dude's man, gonna be a guys forever. Brutal ever, ever. these fans. I mean, geez Louise. I, I saw like, video. Oh, cut away, what? cut away. The dude yeah, exactly. Tattoo, the guy that got the Super Bowl tattoo. Oh don't, yeah. Don't ever get the don't don't get the tattoo before. And he don't, thought they made the it. kick. 
that's tough. Yeah. Oh, I didn't tough. see that part, but just don't get the tattoo before. I saw I, a video on Instagram of there was just a, a, a group of Bills fans after the game just walking. They're just like walking up this icy hill. Like I'm guessing to get up to a parking lot or something. Like just this big, long, icy hill that this, this whole wave of Bills fans were just trudging up, just sorrow and defeat. And there's no dead silence. The ice, was, the ice picks on them with the ice guards on them to walk up that terrain with. Have yeah, fun. I was like, where are they going? Like, I don't know if there's a parking, like an auxiliary yeah, parking sure, lot probably. that they're probably climbing up to. But I was like, man, imagine just trekking mm. up a hill in icy temperature after your team just lost like that. Man, it is. I yeah, have I walked out of the AFC Championship game at Arrowhead after the Cincy, Cincy loss yeah. in very not cold fun. weather. Yeah. It's not a good time. Yeah, that's it's it's tough. Um, Been there, did not enjoy that. Glad we're not doing yeah. that. Anymore. Yep, sure are, sure are. There was definitely um, a lot to be said after the game about uh, all the Bills fans and whatnot. But uh, before we talk about you know the actual happenings in the game, there's some other big stuff that happened outside of the or off the field, I guess you might say, in the up in the up in the stands in the suite. Um, <laughs> That one, one being uh, the animal himself, Jason Kelsey, just making a show of it for sure. He he had a good day on Sunday. If anybody had a good day on Sunday, Jason Kelsey <sighs> had a good day. You notice um, who we didn't talk about being on the screen on Sunday? Yeah, it wasn't that much Taylor yeah. Swift. A lot of Jason oh, Kelsey. No, he was on the Jason, screen, but we weren't yeah, talking Jason about Kelsey it because Jason was show. The, completely shirtless, the, going nuts in the press and in and out of the box. Yeah, Even that was the most impressive shot. part. Yeah, even the one shot of her, you just see Jason Kelsey in the background, chilling shirtless, drinking a beer, yeah, and that's all that matters. Drinking a beer, yeah. When yep. he hopped out of that suite uh, onto that icy, just that icy concrete ledge was like, it was an athlete, you know? Like I knew more to say. it was going to be a Jason Kelsey day from the off-the-field perspective when they <laughs> said he was tailgating in the parking lot with the fans. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was like, "Oh, oh, we're in for one today, boys." You're a Bills fan. How do you feel about Jason Kelsey? I mean, the guy was tailgating with you. He he jumps into the stands to to celebrate, and I mean, hey, he was to to his credit, he was taking pictures with people after the game and taking holding up that little girl to show Taylor Swift. Yeah, Yeah, helping people. I mean, I mean, it's cool, but also like he's kind of just dunking right in their face as his brother and his team is are beating their ass. You know, it's kind of I don't know. You know, I mean, good time for sure. Anybody here going to volunteer to try to pick a fight with Jason Kelsey? I That's mean, what no. I thought. And that <laughs> entourage yeah. that was around him, because not only was there Taylor Swift security guards, not only was there stadium security guards, there was NFL security yeah. guards. Like, there yeah. was, go ahead. Also, I dare yeah. you. There's also Kylie Kelsey. So, I mean, come on. You ain't going, you ain't yeah. going past her. I, mean, like I, said, I think, I think uh, just Jason enough could probably snap most humans. With yeah. minimal, minimal yeah. effort. That was I mean, that was definitely Josh a fun time. Fish around I mean, that first, people. just that first clip of him when they initially showed him with the shirt off, that was electric. Like I was like, man, this oh, and is then the athleticism. Yeah, what a surreal, just a what a surreal moment, you know? <laughs> it's Dude's like three hundred pounds, like thir- like I think McAfee went over. He's like three hundred pounds, thirty six years old. Yeah, he played like 19 games this season. And he's hopping well, he's in and out a of the full season and still just yeah. hops up to a shoulder high ledge, you know, just well, down out. was mm-hmm. whatever back up. Yeah, was... getting back up to the explosiveness on that thing. Yeah, he was <laughs> he was sure had a day. Let's just he say that Jason center. Kelsey yeah. had a great day as well as his brother, obviously, who scored two touchdowns in the game. Um, we should probably whatever. use that as our transition. Yeah. Yeah. So on the field. um, it was like we said in the intro. It was another instant classic of a game. It's crazy how these two teams. I mean, it makes sense because they're just so. I mean, they're basically at this point kind of set up to beat each other. Um, the Bills, yeah. really, that should be their main goal every offseason is somehow defeating Patrick Mahomes. You ain't got to worry about anything else because you're just going to run into Mahomes in the playoffs. Definitely helpful for. Oh, he didn't play much, did he, on Sunday? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's. Oh, where was uh, Trent McDuffie? Oh, that's Trent? right. He was on the field. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was a it was another great great yeah. matchup. Um, early on, both teams were really firing, uh, a more of an offensive battle. The defense uh, from the Chiefs kind of started off to a little slow. Um, some injuries uh, started racking up, which really sucked. Um, really early, really early. Yeah, they really started piling up and made made it kind of tough. I mean, to be their fair though, they uh, they. Got the Bills off with only three points on their first drive. Um, kept them in it the entire time, so that's always uh, good to see limiting them 
as much as they could. Uh, they gave up yeah, 24 was, points. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, but, I mean, hey, the big thing, obviously, uh, we will talk about the second half. Only seven points allowed. Um, again. Which is this the high that the defense is allowed in the second half of this year? Like, They've only allowed seven league. points or less in the yeah. second half of any game this year, or since like week fourteen or something. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good, I'd say. That's pretty good coming out of halftime. Spags making the adjustments necessary to uh, to definitely to uh, slow the Bills down a little bit. But um, yeah, offensively, Chiefs looked pretty good, I'd say. Um, you know, there was there were some question marks going into the game, but uh, Travis Kelsey, you know, he did his thing. You, you know, in the playoffs, especially versus the Bills, Travis Kelsey has some all-time performances that um, really aren't talked about a lot uh, well, in, in the grand scheme of things. But They don't have much choice but to talk about him anymore because he's now alone with Jerry Rice. <laughs> and I mean that in almost every statistical receiving category and postseason yeah. metric, he is, it is him and Cherry Rice, one, two. And in some instances, Travis is, is approaching one or is one. Yeah, there yeah. is one. Another, another spot that, that uh, he became one in with Patrick Mahomes, uh, most playoff touchdowns for a, a quarterback receiver duo passing Tom Brady and Gronk, which is pretty crazy. Um, yep. So that's another just add it to the add it to the stat book of the uh, the Hall of Fame induction, you know. But uh, what do you guys what do you guys think of how the offense started out the game um, in Buffalo going in against that condition? I, I I expected them to kind of do what they did, and I'm glad that they did what we asked and what we kind of hoped they would do. I mean, I, we talked about it two or three times. More mm-hmm. more large personnel more 12 and 13 personnel sets more yeah. because they don't have any linebackers like yeah <laughs> yeah no yeah. Greg got some work so you really yeah and they also really didn't have much on the interior anymore after they lost some guys so it, it was always going to be if they play to their strengths they should dominate this game offensively and they had a chance to put up 40 points in this game and and barring a couple of silly different things they would have so uh, the offense we talked about this to start the year we talked about it when the season started to fall apart and we weren't sure where they were going to end up in the playoffs and i say fall apart with the most sarcasm i can physically say fall apart with but i mean it did look pretty bleak you can't lie i, I think the, 11 and 5 is not bleak or 11 and 6 is not bleak. I'm sorry. I know I know we have different standards for this team at this point, but as long as you put him in the dance and you give yeah. him a chance, they have yeah. a shot. And you got performances out of guys that have been problematic. MVS all year. <laughs> MVS, man. And MVS is the hey, new Frank Clark. Quiet Dips, during the regular I, season. Danny Watkins. I said Sammy Watkins because the only difference is he's not hurt as often as Sammy. Yeah. Like Sammy, yeah. Sammy only showed up in the playoffs because he was hurt except for two regular season games a year. MVS only shows up in the playoffs because he's only available for those apparently. And then, then the two regular mm-hmm. season games a year. I don't, yeah. I don't know why it is, but at this point that's what he's been. So those two catches also, if your hands work like that on that catch. I mean, come on, you know, how do you not, not work that like that yeah. all the time? For real. Well, it's like I know, he but he used one it. hand and absolutely just smothered it out of the air. Just do yeah. catch what it's like how does how do you catch that one and not all oh, yeah, it's I'm not gonna give yeah. MBS the full pass. Shout out for him for having a good day. Yeah, and if an we win another two full, then I will give you some flowers. Again, again, again. in a big game. And against yeah. the Buffalo in a big Listen, in a big spot. Yeah, all that matters is that when you need it most, you step up and you do it. Um and he did, you know. I mean, I guess I mean we kind of needed it a little a couple other times this season. Uh, regardless, but um, it only really matters right now. Oh, I mean, yeah, <laughs> uh, real, yeah. This, bias, matters, we'll yeah, take what it. What have you done for me lately? It mattered right now, so shout out. And him. it matters uh, in the in, in when it's a single elimination dance card. And really, I mean, shout out Mahomes more than anything for just sticking sticking <laughs> with the faith, you know, sticking with the truth and and believing in his guys through everything. Um, All of them, literally, like that's that's the big thing. And and they had 
you know, he took the high road on it all year. He, he never threw anybody under the bus for it. Um, all the receivers drops and whatnot. And then when you, you know, when you need it most, the guy steps up and, and does what you need him to do. So it's great to see. It's great to see um, just the, the chemistry uh, unlocking. It was a little late, but uh, better late than never to be fair. But um, yeah, it was, it was definitely well, a good they, offensive performance. Yeah. And they left some meat on the bone, right? There was mm-hmm. still some, yeah. some plays to be made. Um, they, some they fumbles and bends in. overcame. Yeah. They overcame some of that stuff. Um, just not just a bone. I, I do want to give a shout out to a guy that I'm not, I'm just be honest. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of, but like the, the context of his importance right now cannot be understated. And that's Donovan Smith being back. Um, that has been a huge like piece of the offense kind of restabilizing over the last couple weeks. Um, Wanya just wasn't ready, may not be ready for a while. Um, so having a guy who can come in and just, you know, I think it's even just a comfort thing with Pat. Um, yeah. They, they just seem to be working better. Um, and the whole line. I, it's all of the five, I, Yeah. Five I think the whole them. line. Yeah. It's true for the whole line, but yeah. Um, yeah, I think that that's that's a huge. It can't be understated with the Buffalo Bills team that wanted to get after Pat, and I don't think they gave up a sack. I know for a long yeah, time they sacks. didn't. Neither yeah. neither um, team got a sack. So yeah, which yeah. I mean, I mean both of those quarterbacks are hard to sack. <laughs> so it's and not just a game you know, plan wasn't really designed to I, as stupid as that sounds. We'll talk about it when we talk about the defense, but that wasn't really the game plan either. So yeah, it's a lot of simulated pressure, and you're trying to get him to force him into bad throws and um more about well that and, and they ran a lot, but I think that that's so, a big part of it. And then also, not that you know he needs to. Like, everybody loves him, but like. I talked about this. So the offensive line, but I talked about this, um, you know, I believe it was after the first Bills game, but the frustration of watching teams line up when you know that, you know, they're going to run on you and they're picking up eight, nine, ten yards to carry, yeah. uh, you know, to close out a game. And Isaiah Pacheco was able to do that to them, um, you know, and, and on the other side of that, the Chiefs were able to buckle down. Um, we'll talk more about the defense in just a minute, but like, him Pacheco closing out that game the way that he did was I no. think very much a statement. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they can run that the was, ball. Yeah, that was, uh, the, that was great to see. Tooney is the elephant in the room on that offensive line with now. Good news as good a news as you can get with a peck injury that it's a strain. Um yeah. but wasn't wasn't loving that that happened. Now, if you listened to Nate, I believe, on Only Weird Games. Tooney was in the locker room afterwards. He was moving around, didn't seem to be, and he flat out said he expects him to play. So that's positive news. Yeah, we'll that. probably know a lot more about his status uh, later when we this go, week. Yeah, when we do our next episode. Um, um, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to get to the defense before we we fully give everybody on mm. offense that played a big part um, their flowers. So before we go switching over. Um, Nick Allegretti came in and played well, but the guy for me that mattered that played really well was Noah Gray uh, mm-hmm. at the second tight end position. They they used him in a variety of ways to do different things, and he excelled in both of them and in, in all of them. So it, it should, it's just to the depth of this roster and to the depth of them, I think, simplifying it, but only in the how we're using the guys. They're still running a lot of the same things, but they're using the guys we thought they would use in the scenarios all year right yeah. now, which is nice. Um, <laughs> so that's like the, the offense deserves a lot of credit because they were the better unit in this game, frankly, for, yeah. for a large chunk of it. The defense showed up when they for needed at least to. Three quarters of it. Yeah. But the offense was a large portion of, of that, of that win, which they have not, consistently been or even inconsistently been the better unit this year it's pretty much been the defense all year and for them to have their best game against buffalo in buffalo and for everybody to show up it was it that shows you the mindset and the mentality of of this football uh, this football team mostly set by their leader and their head coach yeah i i definitely agree and you know shout out pacheco having over 100 yards on the day rasheed rice had a great day mm-hmm. um you know travis kelsey two touchdowns love to see that 
No, that was the jersey I had on. Godforsakenly yeah. open was hilarious. If you haven't, if you if you have the ability to watch the all twenty two, please do. If you haven't, and I'm sure somebody will have a breakdown on it somewhere. It was hilarious. They got so confused, yeah. and he just that was a good one. And the second one was just a little quick screen that he muscled his way into. It was good. That was good. It was a good performance from him. It was good to see him uh, really balling out in the playoffs once again. Um, offensive line played well, like we said. There was really only like a couple times where Pat even really had to kind of move around and scramble. He was really had a, a pretty good pocket most of the day. So that definitely obviously helps um, and contributes to a, a successful offense when your quarterback can have time to step up there and, and make some mm-hmm. plays. So Travis yeah. looked fresher. That's what I will say for sure. He looked much more spry and much more. Yeah, from... he definitely looked. He looked pretty good. He did not look like any. Over the last two games, there. by the way, the Dolphins game and this one, even though it was freezing cold outside, he was still much more spry in the Dolphins game than we'd seen him all year. So yeah. So shout out the offense. Like we said, definitely was the the bigger contributor to the win uh, of this game, which we haven't been able to say very much, if at all, this year. Um, but of course, the defense, when we really needed it, definitely stepped up big mm-hmm. and uh, and and shut the game down. But early on, it did look a little rough. Like we mentioned it in in the intro earlier, but the, the injuries early on to the defense definitely played a role, um, a pretty significant role of just losing guys. Yeah. It was it was I mean, not fun. Mike, Mike Evans went down, and Mike Edwards. Uh, yeah. Mike Edwards is. Evans Edwards. I know we want Mike Evans potentially <laughs> next year in free agency, but All right. yeah, Mike Edwards went down. Um, obviously, we lost Billy Gay early, um, yeah. but uh, and this is I tweeted this out kind of shortly after the game. Uh, the guys who stepped in behind him to replace him did really, really well. I oh, mean, no. Jamari Connor, <laughs> uh, a PFF. Not that we treat him as you know them as gospel, but. Um, even he before I saw that, I was that sitting there going, I was watching just the tape from, and I, I haven't had a chance to go back and look at all the coverage snaps, but just the tackling from Connor and some of the physicality, yeah. like he was bringing it. Um, oh, he especially was from the run game. The jump. Yeah, yeah, he was filling. Um, and the same thing with Leo. Leo was kicking ass and eating, eating glass like he always does, like just, <laughs> you know, a ball of violence. Um, there was a couple times where he was out of position. Uh, you yeah. know, but I really, yeah. and I think some of that was just the guys in front of him got moved out of the way so much. Um, yeah. Oh. And, and we'll get there because I don't yeah, want to will, yeah, yeah, will the get defensive there. tackles. It's, it's a concern. Um, but only if they keep active. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. So uh, <laughs> to say, um, to say that the, um, you know, they stepped up and, and even, like I said, one of the big differences early in the season was when it's frustrating when you know the team's running the ball and you can't stop it. They figured out they were running and they found ways to stop it. Um, now, yeah. one other guy, um, same draft, uh, yeah, just um, George Karloftis, dude. Like, talk about taking another step and you know playing playing the the long ball, like you know playing a, a long season and still being productive and disruptive. Um, no sacks in this game from anybody, but there were a couple times where he just straight beat his man, and he had yeah. a good matchup with with Spencer Brown. Um, not a, a not a great tackle, but he he did what he was supposed to, and most importantly, he he kept himself in a lot of instances from over pursuing and letting Josh Allen, you know, just run around outside. So he pushed pushed Allen back um, towards the rest of the defense, which I think was important. So. Um, those three guys just really played, and they're young guys. The Connor one, you guys know, I've been all yeah. about him for a while. Jamari so. Connor definitely needs some some very big flowers after that game. Even live, like watching the game, you know, we mentioned the defense looked looked very slow and and rough coming out the gates. But I, I mean, mm-hmm. I even said it live, like everybody looks bad on the defense except for Jamari Connor. He was flying around early. He actually had to start this game, which mm-hmm. which was good to see. And he's yeah, kind of. He got the start because of the package that they started in, especially with the Bills, and that was mm-hmm. nice. He, he was not. He, he was not start. supposed to play that load of. He snaps. got the start. Come on, and Mike he Edwards start. gets. Net but KO'd he got yeah. He got plenty of. Yeah. of so that's that, that for him. And... To, for, I'm, no, I'm, Garrett. I'm, it's not a knock. It's, yeah. It's more credit 
he stepped into a role where he was not supposed to see a hundred percent of the snaps. And I think he was pretty close to a hundred percent of the snaps. Um, he was definitely up there. And for him to do that now, this is where I talked about a little bit in the, in the earlier parts, some of the plan was contain because they pass rushing. Josh Allen will get you run on, which is what we saw somewhat in the first half. They were trying mm-hmm. to do more. There was guys leaving rush lanes open and he was scooting out the door and then he was down the field for 20 yards and 30 yards. Then they'd hit a James Cook run and you have those issues. So we knew the run game was going to be a problem. The interior of the line, not named Chris Jones, had a rough day. Partially because there are there's at least one individual playing in this football game who should not have been. And it's not his fault. That's not a Styles makes fights kind of matchup for him. I, there are it, situations this year where I'm more than willing to have him play for this team. That is not one of them. Running Josh Allen and running James Cook, while they really don't throw the ball much this year, which sounds crazy when you're talking about Buffalo, but they're basically tight ends, running backs, and the occasional digs. Ooh. Oof. Ouchie. Yeah. yeah. That's tough. I mean, but that's been the case. I mean, they've shut down people all year. But putting, putting him in that position – Making so him be the guy Kim, that's called him is, by the way, Kyle. Who is him? I, I don't like those calling guys know. out like that, but Matt Dickerson <laughs> should not have been in the, on the field. <laughs> yeah. He shouldn't have been. I. It's not any fault of his home. It's just not. And then to get up and start to get into it with somebody, like you're somebody to get potential, like get away. Don't do it, get a flag. You're, you're getting away, run over. Bro. Please away. don't make it worse. So, yeah. like, that. There were decisions made on the defensive line that I would have preferred. And, and they made it. And again, I, I tweeted this. I, it was live when it happened. I said they needed to wake up. The secondary woke up. I'm glad Trent wasn't hurt when he hobbled off the field when he got rolled up on his ankle a little bit. Yeah. Um. But they needed to wake up. They needed to make adjustments. They did. Also, I, I don't know why. I know that sometimes you just get caught as a defense with some odd things when you're in man coverage, but Nick Bolton on Stephon Diggs in the slot is n- not yeah, that was not weird what I, I I saw the motion happen and I was like, oh no, they're in man, and that's definitely <laughs> going to be Nick Bolton that's covering him. There's no way that's Nick Bolton's covering him, right? And then it was, and then it was like, okay, Nick, just wait. Oh no, you went to him. Oh no, it's over. No. And I, I couldn't help but with the Disney movie of make him make the first move, Conway. Let him come to you. There is no reason for you to go to him on that play. But that's mm-hmm. one of those things with coverage instincts where we've – but we've known that with Willie – or with not Willie, with, with Nick. And, <laughs> Nick, yeah. And I mean, hey, you it's know, not a knock. Not I'm not trying not to hate on the guy, but that's not a matchup that you want. You don't yeah. want number I mean, one what you, what you expect on to do? linebacker. You don't want yeah. that with many linebackers. Yeah. There's not too many linebackers on earth that I want Stephon Diggs one-on-one with. Drew Tranquil. I put Drew Tranquil on him yeah, for sure. I don't know that mm-hmm. I want him one-on-one with him even still. I mean, if we're putting Stephon linebacker, I'm just saying, too, if you're, if you're so. choosing linebackers, that'd be one of them, I'm just saying. They did I'm use Drew as a safety in some positions. He used him as a too high safety casually. Nate Tice dropped that clip and i had had not had a chance i actually got to watch the all 22 this afternoon so when nate dropped that i was literally about three plays before that in the all 22 and then i happened to see that and i was like oh oh they legitimately I mean, he, okay he's got a db number you know hey why not you know <laughs> drop that man back there all right but it, it speaks to his versatility also he i'm sure we'll get to the some after the game locker room type stuff but he was one of the uh more vocal, <laughs> happier humans, yeah. um, which just he's, may give say, you some very insight happy, into what it was like in, say, another place that is in our division right. that he played for several years. Right. I don't know. Right. Yeah. But, you know, when the defense really needed it most, like we said, coming out of halftime, that's when the, the adjustments really kicked in. They scored one touchdown, and then uh, they pretty much held them, held them very well. Um, and there's a couple, mm-hmm. obviously – uh, there was a fake Dude, punt delays. that was that was pretty hilarious. Um, oh, God, just, why do we do this? I Dave, I you sick. Once again, once again, psychopath. somebody tries to to run a fake punt with a safety in the divisional round or in the playoffs, and and look what happens. Once again, you get shut down. It, By it's the not way, work. 
That, that was one of the happened. worst big punt attempts maybe of all time. Well, it I only know. happened because we had 10 guys on the field because Joshua Williams' yeah. gunner got hurt like two plays before that, and nobody saw it apparently. So That's true. he wasn't on the field. Yeah. So then there wasn't a sub on the field. My favorite part, though, is Nick Bolton on his way off the field after yeah. the third down stop. Going, Mike, Watch the play. fake punt, fake punt, fake punt. Yeah, yeah earmuffs. It makes like I can just smell earmuffs, it in the air. Earmuffs, and it's like, okay, so then – you get you get the fake punt, of course, because Demar Hamlin is gonna get it. For, like I, uh, I yeah, I'm not one. Memes to, after that the, one, the, dude. The Disney memes, the Disney the memes were good. Sean McDermott thought it was a Disney movie. Made yeah. me laugh probably too hard. I'm I'm sorry. I did nothing against <laughs> Demar. That's just funny. Um, there, yeah, there were a lot of uh, Sean McDermott memes that uh, probably. <laughs> oh, uh, Josh Briscoe, were, you are an amazing. Oh that, yeah, Josh. Uh, Josh had a good one. Yeah, Josh, that probably was cool. probably not going to share out loud At here. JB yeah. Risto, no e. If you need to go find, yeah, you can it, find well, You can scroll his timeline. It won't take that. Safe long. to say, the memes were prevalent uh, after mm-hmm. that game. But yeah, um, so in the second half, the defense they really put it together. Like they Farrell? really, hmm? or can we just act like Neil Farrell or Bugs or mm. I? God, I don't. It, it just, yeah, yeah. I mean, you trade a six-round pick for Neil Farrow, bro's like three fifty. Like, just put him in he there. You know, is literally a giant, and yet he's so big. The first time we saw him, it's like, oh my god, he's so. I big. didn't realize what that was him, him until I, I was like, oh wow. Yeah, it's like that. Don Terry Poe, no. I no, have to say this, to Chris, because I was hard on Chris on uh, on the broadcast watch. Chris played mm-hmm. a much better game than I originally thought when I went back and watched it. Yeah, yeah. like you said, it was. There's the a way game like, plan Josh Allen. was very different in the second half. Like yeah. I said, they they were straight up in a contain rush. They were right. they like playing Josh pushing. Allen. You definitely, they, if you do try to put too pressure. much pressure on him, he's just gonna it pop was all off. Pocket on pressure. Him. They they bull rushed him basically across all four positions and then blitzed it occasionally like that. It was all bull rush. So for Chris with with the double teams and the triple teams, he made one of the biggest plays by absolutely crushing. Deion Dawkins' soul right back into Josh Allen's <laughs> yeah. knees while he was trying to throw that ball to Khalil Shakir, who was yeah, that open, last drive. By the that's way. when that last drive is when it really, it really set in for the defense and they really stepped up and uh, and got the mm-hmm. job done. And um, you got your biggest players making your biggest plays, Chris Jones. Yeah. Uh, you you got those guys, and uh, I don't know, Tom. <sighs> this defense has been all year, and now they're just re- having ra- like Deion Bush was. <laughs> wildly good in this game. Solid. Um, For all I mean, expectations of everything we've ever seen from him before, yes. way above. Talk about, yeah, tough spot. Way but he's been with the team for a couple of years. He knows his assignment. Like, he's, you know, he's one of those guys, and that's where um, – So you have depth. About what Brett Veach does, right, in the offseason. Yeah. He goes out and grabs these guys. One year – sorry, my, my camera keeps moving over. Um, one year, two year deal on these vets, and then they have their best time of their lives in Kansas City, and then they go get paid somewhere. Um, you know, That's Mike Edwards good. didn't play, but Drew Tranquil. I mean, all these guys. Like, there's, there's a lot, um, a lot of value that he gets at the bottom of these rosters, just grabbing guys like a Dion Bush who plays on special teams. Who will you know? Who can come in and he fill in? Who's what a year squad for like two years? Yeah, he is your what? So Brian Cook, Chamari Connor, Mike Edwards. He's like your fifth safety. Like you know, going into the well, season, actually, he's, he's probably six because Nazi went down in camp. Yeah. So yeah, he's like you know the the guy that you just don't. Um, he may not have been on this don't. team if Nazi Johnson's healthy. Just, yeah. So it's. I, it's important to know, hey, like they are, they've got the depth, and that's what you run into this time, yeah. right? When the Bills linebackers started getting hurt, you know, and they're bringing in guys, and and immediately, you know, they're giving up big plays to Travis Kelsey, and they're giving up big plays to Pacheco, and and that's you know, the Chiefs weren't in that position because they were able to to hold on to some depth pieces throughout the and season. Even the young guys are mm-hmm. the de- the defensive side of this fo- football team. The young now it's been a focus for Brett in the draft because that's basically what he got told he had to fix over the last four years on the long haul. That was his long haul project. He's had to do some 
side quest insta projects in between there but the long haul project was this defense and it's probably it's the deepest i mean it's definitely been it's, obviously it's been the, the the unit that's carried us to this point it's the um, deepest yeah. unit we've seen in the chiefs uniform in a very long time on that side yeah. of the ball. okay so let's talk about let's talk about the end the end of the game uh, obviously we get those those stops uh, on Josh Allen, he he takes two shots at the end zone at the end of that drive, and they set up for what was like a forty-four yard 48, kick, eight I think, forty-eight yard kick, and uh... <laughs> oh, and I well, okay. Before we get to that, what was y'all's yeah. blood? How was everybody's blood pressure throughout the game? Because throughout uh, the game, we talked about on the last episode, this was a yeah. house money game. So house did you have house sure. money emotions, or did you still have regular playoff I, game emotions? I tried. I, I started with house money emotions, and then I got sucked right in. Because I'm such not a gonna good lie, game. I was I was pretty chilled throughout most of it. I think after halftime, um, I think they were up on us at one point in ha- after halftime. Uh, they came out and, and potentially scored or something, but I, I think I was pretty chilled throughout most of it, especially going into that last drive. And you know, you get the stop, and and they're set up for a kick. And I was like, this is great. Like we have a minute, like forty six left. Like they're gonna kick a field goal to tie it, and we're fine. Like I was, I was celebrating. Like this is great, holding him to a three pointer. Also, though, he might miss it. Just you know, he might miss it though. And I just kind of put that in passing. Um, but yeah, wow. he. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, safe to say, wide right, it, it I, hit Buffalo once again. It was house money emotions with it for pretty much the whole game, but it was largely not because of the house money aspect. It was largely because that was the first time all year I looked at Patrick. And was like, oh, we're comfortable. I'm good here. Like, yeah, they're yeah. moving and at will, and they there's were. nothing that nobody like. They they are choosing how to destroy them and just doing it, and they don't have anything to stop them with. So, as long as we have the ball last, and there's yeah. more 13 seconds or more on the clock, I was pretty comfortable with any amount of point totals that we needed, especially as Garrett mm-hmm. points out when it is just going to be at at the worst case scenario a tie with yeah. almost two minutes left actually funny enough i guess really the most nervous i was was on that last drive when mm-hmm. they had like it was so actually i remember it specifically it had like five minutes left and they were at their like 37 or something and i was like this i can the see them drive, wasting right? down you were yeah I, I was like it i was like i can easily scoring. see them just wasting down the entire clock right here on this drive like and there's a decent chance at the last second yeah like i i yep. felt at that moment like there's a decent chance patch mahomes doesn't get this ball again unfortunately you know and like 13 seconds that is in the back of your mind like mm-hmm. hey they have to leave like literally no time it, oh, it'd be crazy they to happen to again that. i think yeah. part of why they had some of the decision making that they made down yeah. the stretch on that it was drive. good to see it was good to see um that kind of crumble on them when they uh they obviously tried to kind of delay I, someone someone talked about it on on twitter but they kind of prioritized draining the clock more than they did um, moving yeah, the ball a hundred percent you watch them go yeah. conservative you watch them try to bleed the clock down and it's it's march down the field yeah. and then they got in that red zone range where he hit that shot for him the in the 13 seconds game literally mm-hmm. the Khalil Shakir play they tried yeah that's that, he was Gabe, that was the Gabe Davis touchdown the year in 21 or whatever that was yeah, and I mean, you know, it was a little soon maybe to score on that, but also like they tried the other method of letting it drain all the way down. The only the reason score, they tried that so. is because they were backed up so far on third down there because of. Yeah, I think didn't they take a penalty at some point during that. They or had a, a delay of game, delay game, or like a yeah, I think they had a delay of game at one. So point. like that was that kind of that's the problem. Momentum. You can't have it yeah. home in a playoff game. <laughs> yeah, they were, and he was, and McDermott was like fired up about it i think there was a miscommunication but yeah it's always somebody thing. else's fault sean why is yeah. that serious yeah well you know they should really they if only there were some like examples of you know organizations that work together really well as a team in terms of you know like cohesiveness that they could model themselves after they would maybe not you know maybe things wouldn't come crashing down around them maybe. like that so maybe maybe some Airmen, 
uh, pilots is where I was headed. Yeah. But some, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, the, the safe, the safe to say, uh, the Chiefs. <laughs> I don't even. Yeah. I don't even. The, the, he, listen, the Bills kicker, he missed the kick, and that was basically all she wrote. You know, I at feel that bad point, for him. By the way, I, do I feel, feel really bad. bad. For Tyler Bass and what I do like is killing that dude. Or yeah, and what I did like to see, uh, Chiefs fans on Twitter, they started uh, donating to the the. I believe it's an animal yeah. shelter that he supports. Yeah. Um, so that's good to see. Chiefs fans are so great at doing that, which is why like we're just the best fan base that's on the earth. Other, one of the other parts about Bills Mafia that was there was that was a co sponsor yeah. deal. Both, that's both true. fan base just got in there because there is a sect of that fan base that's very poor and does trashy things like send death threats to kickers. Look, guys. Yeah, um, yeah a lot of that, unfortunately. Also, I don't know where this whole there was no wind thing is coming from. But I There's wish a lot of wind. You can see it on those lines. Yeah, it was a disgusting wind fest all night. There, it's off a lake. Yeah, there was wind. Yeah. Enough and said. you can see the flag on the goalpost behind them on the yeah, broadcast moving. shot. Yeah, they were going, going the exact the way right. that the kick. Yeah, went right. Yeah. Well, well and it was yeah, and it was a I, kind of a swirling. Uh, it's not fun to kick there. I'm glad we didn't make Harrison kick as many field goals, and I'm glad. I mean, Harrison had a Harrison Butker. He had like a 44 yarder or something that he kicked, and it was like an, into a 10 mile per hour wind. Yeah, and Harrison, like he yeah. barely got that thing there. That thing. <laughs> like, well, you saw him go. Oh, I didn't think it was gonna get there because it died. Yeah. Like he yeah, hit exactly. that thing probably good for 60, and it only went 47. Yeah, that was a big. That was a big factor. The kicking once again was. A tough situation for for the hey, It's almost there. like it's... having a really good one of those and having really good special teams is important in the playoffs. And I know yeah. that people mm-hmm. murder Dave Tobe all the time for things, but like they got a stop on a p- fake punt with ten guys on the field, <laughs> and his punter and kicker have outperformed both special teams units they have gone up against by tenfold the last two weeks. Now, yeah, Buffalo more decision making decided to keep injured punter instead of healthy punter and injured punter did not have a good day. Did not do very good. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, hey, that's yeah. Huge. straight ducks. I Literally. I wonder whose decision that was. Hmm. Couldn't have been Sean's. Yeah. I yeah. don't know, but um, I'm, yeah, look, so man, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to figure out who that he's going to throw under the bus for this one because they've thrown every other defensive, they've thrown every other coordinator and coach and yeah, fire their offensive coordinator, either the GM or or nope or or the quarterback at this point for Sean, who's the problem. So mm-hmm. yeah, so the Bills definitely got a long offseason ahead of them. The Chiefs, on the other hand, not the quarterback. The uh, the the journey continues for for the Chiefs <laughs> as we go to Baltimore, which we will uh, definitely talk about next or in this uh later this week we're gonna have a, another episode coming live to you guys um which is gonna be a fun time um with a guest but, live with yeah guest. with a guest so that's, that's something to look out for um any any closing thoughts on on the game um from from your guys's perspective sorry bills fans maybe next year sorry not sorry this is it's funny uh, nick wright you know talked about it a lot it's this is like the bills year to beat the Chiefs, and they still didn't. Nick do Wright it. talked about it a lot. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. he dropped some. He dropped some banners. The dropping banners uh, portion of that that was electric. That was uh, that was some good TV right there. Uh, Shout out Nick Wright. He is definitely a uh, a true Russian Chiefs fan. That uh, that yeah. is good representation for us. Um, when um, many don't, many of them, many people don't. So I guess I guess for me on the final thoughts of the game itself, we got some more stuff to yeah. wrap up the episode with. But for the game itself, um. Uh, the the young guys, the depth pieces of this defense standing up and being as big as a part of that win as they were, especially in the second half, and Spags making the adjustments was ginormous. And 15 very much enjoys being LeVon and being <laughs> on the road in and being the villain. Like, he, he had fun. They looked like oh, they yeah. were having fun being the bad guys. That's, that's good to see because they're going to be it for a while. Yep. Rest of the season for sure. Tom, any closing thoughts oh, no. on, on the game? Here. This is going to go on for a long time. With well, him, yeah, I, the man, yeah. he's, you're the villain now. You, you, we, we are the bad. We're the bad guy. They are coming together at the right time, later than we wanted them to. Um, 
there is a lot. You guys know I'm always thinking about the off season, so I'm like, <laughs> ah. thing we've said that has been a constant. Uh, anytime you watch Patrick Mahomes play, but also this defense, also this team, this year, enjoy it as as long as it goes. You know, and that's that's something that you have to remember. We've done this, you know, even from our side, you know, recording podcasts and um, watching games and, and following the team. Um, even, you know, even from I think all of our perspectives, we'll be the first ones to say this has been a weird year for us um, yeah. as a podcast. Oh, yeah. um, it's been a long year. And no matter, you know, all the regular season games that came with the ups and downs, you know, highs and lows, at the end of the day, um, it's win or go home. And so, um six straight AFC championships does not just happen to anybody. Um and the, you know I here this this is my this is my final thought. The Chiefs didn't win a playoff game in my lifetime until Andy Reid got to town. Um it had been brutal. And now, like, the, how far this franchise has come cannot be overstated. This, I mean, just appreciate it, enjoy it, and still house money. And uh, yeah, look, like we're, we're doubling down, really putting is. it all on black. Or yeah, I guess maybe sure all on red. Yeah, so, it's, yeah. We, we definitely still, uh, I would agree with that. We're still playing with house money here. Um, yeah. moving it forward change from last week to this week. Yeah. Once you're in the house money range, you're already in the house. It doesn't, it doesn't yeah. go away from it. It gets sweeter and sweeter. You know, you just keep doubling down. So now you, like I said, we just get to get to more villain arc, which, yeah. um, oh, yeah. speaking of villain arc, we, yeah. we have to do the little bit of receipt keeping here. Um, Dion Dawkins, buddy. Dion <laughs> Dawkins, buddy. How you doing? How you doing? Well, See what you said and you did and the things that were that well. What's yeah. the phrase? The new thing, the uh, the F A F O, as they say nowadays. Yeah. I believe is mm-hmm. the is the phrase. It's a it's a direct correlation. Hey. You know, you do something and then you find out. So and he did. Shout out to Bobby for keeping Patrick accustomed and aware of all the nice things that are said by everyone all the time because. <laughs> That contributes to the villain arc that we're going to get to live for the next several years. And like I said, guys, enjoy it. It's going to be fun. So with that, um, Jason McIntyre is also having a rough – had a rough one on Sunday. He did not enjoy his time Brutal. watching that football Brutal game. time. Yeah. Um, not ideal. Not good. There was, there was three folks at Good Morning Football, including one very passionate, very loud, yeah, very Kyle Brent. Rude, He's a very weed, buddy. Stout. See you later. See you later, bud. It just over like doing too much by on the longest margins of doing too much on that one. Uh, that was it was mostly a, I don't want I want to talk about Taylor Swift to say Taylor Swift on this podcast as much on the show as much as possible and then take shots at Travis. It was very weird. I don't know. No, nope, uh, was not it. That all those receipts were kept. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Joe Shad, uh, the angry Dolphins reporter that wanted the game moved because it was cold. <laughs> That guy. Um, yeah. The Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen in the AFC Championship game tweet. Yeah, that age like milk. Hmm. Um, <laughs> so I just, like I said, also, it's very Sean nice. Elliott, the Sean Elliott from the, yeah, from the Dolphins. That was, that was good, too. Yeah. Yeah. Hope yeah. you're enjoying that salad, buddy, in Cancun. Yeah. Sorry, bud. One, two, three. Enjoy Cancun. Yep. So, um, the Mondays will be there soon. On that same note, and, and yes, it's a little Ravens related, um, Apparently, people don't learn. They're gonna do. They're doing it again. They're already because starting. Marcus Williams decided that he was gonna come in with. They gotta come in here and beat us. And it's all. It's it. They gotta come into the bank and. Okay. Yeah. Well. Hey, guess what? Hey, guess what? Marcus Williams, you just made the list. All right. <laughs> um, you just Bobby, made the list. Bobby quote tweeted the K Adams interview, and all it says is Sunday with a period on the end of it. So, you know who saw that and got that. So that's yep. It. yep. At least we got it on Tuesday, and we didn't have to wait till Thursday or Friday or whatever it was that Dawkins waited to fire that one his off. We got it early <laughs> in the week, so we can get it out of the system. Look, yeah. man, this team is 
they've they've already they're firing out conspiracy theories but they fired out so many conspiracy mm-hmm. theories now that they've contradicted themselves so this is going to be a mess either way so it's going to be quite fun to watch those fireworks um yeah it's it's a good time guys it, enjoy it <laughs> Yeah, this you're gonna is... have a lot of people in from the, would that have the same bio, and all of it's gonna say Boston in it, yelling things at you for no reason on so <laughs> out in public, at social media, on social media, uh, at random sporting events that have absolutely nothing to do with the sport that you're that they're yelling at you for at all. Like it, get just it's coming. It be ready because that's what that's where we are now. Yeah, this is this is gonna be a, a good time. It's definitely been. Uh, more enjoyable past couple weeks than it has been the rest of the season. Um, so we'll see how Maybe it goes. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. We'll uh, we'll talk more about that uh, this coming Friday. We're going to be live right here on YouTube. Um, yes. Definitely on YouTube. I don't know if other platform. I don't know, I don't know what platform. Uh, we'll be on know. at least. Uh, well, yeah, we'll at least be, YouTube. You can at minimum find us on the YouTube. We'll start. We're gonna there. Find, find us on the YouTube. So if you're not subscribed if to our YouTube, if you're following if you're our this, other live broadcasting channels, yeah. you already know where to find us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but <laughs> follow us on YouTube. Kingdom says uh, the Kingdom says on on YouTube. Um, if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Music or whatnot, go check us out over there. You can see our our beautiful faces talking this thing out. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a good time. Good times in in, in the Kingdom. Um, so let's end it on a, on a good time on this podcast and so, and a fun little exercise that uh, yeah I have to give a shout out to Powell Analytics on Twitter for putting out this question. We've kind of modified it to our own purposes. We're going to do it both ways here, and it'll be quick and easy at the end. So uh, you can bring back any retired player in their prime to your favorite sports team. Chiefs, in this Chiefs. instance, would be the team that we're bringing the player back to. Um, we're going to do this two ways. One is a retired chief player to bring back to the chiefs. And the other is a retired as the question states player, which would be yeah. any retired player from any team to bring back to your current roster. So Did you say the, the caveat in there though. Yes. The caveat. I said, I said both. Yeah. You could do, we're going to do the chiefs one and we're going to just do but it, regular. The but thing in the retired. question though, the caveat is that and, it replaces the the mm-hmm. current best player at that position. So you got there you is the kicker. That in mind. So no, I hadn't yeah. added that, Garrett. I apologize. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, best or uh, any player from NFL history, and then a Chiefs uh, player, uh, retired player in that history, you can replace. To replace the player at a yeah, position. Yeah, so you're, you're sacrificing the best player at that position to be replaced with this player. Um, we had a lot of thoughts, a lot of thoughts on this in the group chat yeah. earlier. Um, definitely. Definitely got creative with it. Definitely got pretty creative. You can get pretty creative with some things. You know, Rob Gronkowski did play snaps at safety. I'm just saying, you know. There's loose <laughs> there's loose interpretations here, okay? Yeah. So. But uh, overall, I think, you know, the, there's there's really th- probably three uh, main. Well, main go, ahead and do your, go ahead and do your NFL, uh, just any NFL player, Garrett, first. Yeah, so mine, uh, my, my creative one, I was going for Megatron. You know, I'm going, I'm going Megatron. Calvin Johnson replacing. Unfortunately, that best receiver probably is going to be Rasheed Rice. I mean, technically on the depth chart, it's MVS. So I don't know how how technical we can get with it. A lot of the time. He might be a slot receiver. You know, that's a different position technically. If we're talking about X receiver, Y receiver, Z receiver. this is some of the nuance in that question that it leaves up for interpretation. (laughs) Some of the nuance. Honestly, though, even if we have to replace Rasheed Rice, Calvin Johnson, uh, just catching passes from Patrick Mahomes, just throw it to him every single time and uh and you're basically good to go um well i'm sure you can i'm sure you can find a caveat rasheed rice gets on there too and replace mvs and then uh he can just wear number 11 just there you go you ain't gotta worry about it um so yeah that's that was my pick tom i know tom you had a nfl one yeah (sighs) so are you gonna gonna do your both are you gonna do them both i mean uh, we could we could split hairs but i'm yeah i'm gonna go with both my my answer is is one player for both um, yeah. you know, cause I think there's a couple other guys at the same position you could have in the conversation, but I think it, we're going to scratch two inches with one stroke here. And that's going to be Willie Rove. Um, let him come play left tackle. Uh, I think it mentioned that we get them in their, in their prime. Mm-hmm. So yeah. prime yeah. Willie Rove on this line. Yeah, um, prime. I know there's, yeah. I know the wide receiver is a bigger need, but you know, you know, and that offense operated really well in a similar position, right? They, yeah. they were very productive, um, and, and I just think that having that, I mean, and even then you could 
let Donovan play on at right tackle. Jawan, however we need it. Well, I guess we lose Donovan, but um, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, we'll I, I, I think that moves the needle the most um, yeah. for any position that we currently have. I think you know I, I would love to get a defensive tackle, but then we lose Chris Jones, and I think that that you know it's like you can't find one guy to do it all. Yeah. Um, unless you're getting really specific and dividing into nose tackle, defensive, you know, three tech, that kind of thing. So to stick with this spirit of the argument, I'm saying let's bring Willie Rofe back home. Um, again, if you want me to go, oh, what, this left tackle was better. Probably, maybe. There's there's a couple guys. If you said Jonathan Ogden or Anthony Munoz yeah. or Joe Thomas or, you know, some of those other guys. I'm probably still rolling with Willie, but I get the argument. Yeah, or, yeah Orlando Pace was another one that All I would fans. like, you know, I grew up yeah. watching him. But but I, I would say Willie just, you know, again, we're scratching two itches here. So uh, yeah. Willie's my pick. I will uh, I will do this with the NFL side. Um, similar to, I guess, Garrett on the uh, receiver side. Uh, I, my, my thought process there is, is Randy on the NFL side. Just, yeah. It's, that's just not not fair, <laughs> not good luck. Like, you guys thought, and I said this in the group chat, you guys thought that F it, Tyreek's down there somewhere was a joke. <laughs> Randy yeah, Moss, really doing y'all. Randy, yeah. Patrick would be like, nah, who? how many dudes are, I don't care. Here you go. Go yeah. goodbye. go get it. Like, yeah, I'm, I think I'm throwing those... it as far as you can run. So just keep running. Yeah. I mean, adding any you know top five NFL Hall of Fame receiver to this offense would be awesome to see on the receiving end of Patrick Mahomes' passes. Um, yeah, there's That's a couple. It. Yeah, I'm what, gonna go your... with my chief, and then I'm gonna let you wrap with your chief, yeah. and then you can get us out of here. That way, mm-hmm. it's a smoother exit. You know, behind the scenes stuff for you guys. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go edge. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, since you. Right and left tackle, you right and left end, and no offense to Mike Dana, but that that defensive end spot is going to go to Derek Thomas. And it's, yeah. I, now, scheme dependently, I could even <laughs> technically argue that he could he's a linebacker, right, he's a linebacker do all that right. noise, but yeah. I, he would be a defensive end in this system. Um, all those spags would have an absolute field. Oh man, he just Thomas on go to town with him. Yeah, no kidding. Um. It's Derek Thomas for me, and, and I'm yeah. sorry, Mike. But even if you have to replace, even if you're getting real t- uh, you're broad with it, have to replace George, like Leo. Yeah, <laughs> it, linebacker. No, no matter who you're replacing, really, yeah. unless like, like only Chris Jones would be the yeah. the one. Oh, and he's not a lot, and he's not an edge. So, well, yeah, but I'm just saying, like overall, in the entire defense, oh, Derek yeah. Thomas or Derek Thomas is your best defensive player, maybe besides Chris Jones. It's like one A and one B, so it's yeah. that'd be pretty nice for sure. Um, yeah. There's no, yeah, there's, there's no couple. edge, there's no edge rush problems with to not help Chris Jones. Go, pick who you're doubling out of those two guys. Exactly. Go ahead. Good yeah. luck. So that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty style. There's a couple other, you know, ways Max you protect. can take. Max protect. <laughs> I need eight. I need eight. I need eight. And yeah. <laughs> and then you know, yeah, maybe you maybe shake up the the defensive backfield. My my Chiefs uh, player, realistically, I think Tom is probably the right answer with Willie Rofe. Um, cause that's just a, a, a very solid position, but we all, we all agree um, with Tom is what we're, what we're getting yeah, here. But Tom, we'll Tom to... definitely had the right answer, the most right of yeah. answers, but, um, another position you can kind of look at safety, you know, you maybe, uh, you take out Justin Reed and you add in the, the goat himself, Eric Berry, put him prime, back in prime Eric Berry. I'm, I'm prime, I mean, yeah, I mean, what are we, what are we doing here? You know, uh, that'd be huge. Um, could even, you know. Cornerback probably don't want to go that direction. Linebacker, I, was I guess you go can make an argument. Mention Derek Johnson because I would absolutely take yeah. him for Nick Bolton, and it's not his yeah. fault. But <laughs> Nick Nick is great, but Derek Johnson was just the best of both worlds as a like, linebacker, very complete linebacker for sure. Um, you know, I, there even could be an argument you can make of Jamal Charles over Isaiah Pacheco. I, I still take Pop. I'm gonna take Pop still. Just I love Jamal, but it's not as much of an upgrade. Because the line is so yeah, there's a, better, there's a lot better. There's a lot better positions. What we know to, about uh, running backs, and and I know he's the running back that defies what we know about running backs, and he would be insane running behind this offensive line. Don't don't get me wrong, adding <laughs> Jamal Charles would yeah. hurt a lot of people's feelings to having to deal yeah. with Patrick Mahomes and Jamal Charles. Like who? That's another one of those pick your poison things. But yeah. I just for for the for the overall conversation, like Tom mentioned, I think it's the Willie Rofe thing for sure. 
Yeah, I think I think Tom takes the take on that one. So uh, let us know in the comments who you would pick. Um, yes, that'd be that'd be fun. Both of those, and, the NFL uh, and the Chiefs, or if it's the same. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we will we will see you guys later this week. Like I said, Friday. Be sure to tune in live Friday on YouTube. Kingdom says pot on YouTube. Um, Eight o'clock Arrowhead time, and mm-hmm. be ready. I'm sure we'll probably take some questions. We'll probably interact with the chat if you guys are around because yeah. we we want you guys to be around, and we will have a special guest. Um, so that will be that will be fun on Friday. So yeah, so check us out there. Be sure to follow us on. Uh, Twitter X, some might call it. We still we still call it Twitter around here, as Barks. But uh, be sure to follow us there. Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Get up to date on all the stuff we do. And um, like we said, Chiefs Kingdom, enjoy this thing. This is this is still the golden era of Chiefs football. Um, and you know it can only go up from here. So thank you all for tuning us, tuning in, and rocking with us so far this year. And uh, we will see you guys in the next episode of The Kingdom Says. <laughs>